Hey guys, welcome to our series of codeless programming. In this video, we'll be talking about creating a codeless logic for an event handler. Uh, the idea that I have in mind that I would like to implement will provide the following behavior. Take a look at the data table that I have here. It is called employee and it's rather basic. Uh, it consists of the column's name, age and social security number. So right now when an application retrieves the data from this table, all of the columns are returned. In fact, if I switch to REST console, that gives me an ability to do sample requests and I click get to get the data. Notice that the data includes the social security number. What I would like to do is I want to change this behavior and say that if a user who's in the admin security role makes the request, then social security number would be returned. Otherwise, hide the social security number in the responses. In fact, I did create a uh, test user. Here it is, admin at backendless.com. And you can see that I have assigned the role that is admin. So this is going to be the user that I will be testing this behavior with. And right now to demonstrate, here's a request once again uh, of a user who is not logged in. And now I'm logging in as admin. And if I make the request, it's going to be exactly the same response because uh, right now we haven't done anything yet. So the end goal will be to create codeless logic that will be able to filter out this property on every single employee that is returned if the user is not admin. To get started, I will be switching to the business logic screen and uh, we'll select event handlers. Event handlers and back handlers provide a way to inject additional logic uh, that can modify the data or do some uh, some additional things uh, whenever an API is being executed. So here I will create a new event handler. We'll select codeless and for the category we'll select data tables. The event that we'll work with is called find. It is going to be invoked whenever someone fetches data from a table. Timing identifies when our logic will be executed and I want to execute it after find, meaning once the data has been fetched from the database. And the context is the table uh, for which the code will be executed. It is the employee table. Click Save and a wrapper, uh, the placeholder for the codeless logic is created. As you can see, it is the after find event for the table employee and it is codeless. To start editing the logic, click the open logic designer link and it opens the logic designer and uh, this is the placeholder that is created where all the logic is going to go into. So the, the logic is going to work like this. If we have as a part of the context we get the user roles block and this is going to be a collection of all the roles that the user who makes the call belongs to. If the user is not admin, then the admin is not going to be part of this collection. Otherwise, it will include the uh, this collection will include the admin role. So the very first thing that we are going to do is we're going to check whether admin is part of user roles. To do this, back uh, backendless and uh, our codeless implementation includes a special block called list contains item. And uh, I will change this rendering to uh, external inputs. And uh, the list that we're going to work with is user roles. And the item we're going to check is going to be called admin. There you go, admin. So this block will return true if admin is a part of this collection and false otherwise. So now since we have some logic that checks this, it's going to be if, there you go. So uh, what's going to happen in this if block, it's going to check if the list item includes admin. But what we want is the reverse behavior is when the user roles collection does not include admin, only in this case we're going to be removing some data from the collection. So to do this we will do, uh, we'll add the not operator. So here we go. If the list does not include admin, then we will apply our logic. And the logic is going to be rather simple. 
the re response result is a collection of all the objects from the employee table. So what we will need to do is iterate over this particular collection and then every object in that collection remove the social security number property. To iterate over this collection, if we go into loops, we'll see that there is a for each item block. Let's snap it right here. And this is going to be our list. So response result is this list. To make the codeless logic more readable, let's rename this j variable to employee. And what we have now is for each employee in list, that is the result of the find operation, we need to remove the property. To remove a property, uh, the object category includes this block, delete object property. And the object that we're going to delete the property in is going to be this variable employee. Let's drag it out here. So for each employee, remove the property that is called social security number. And this is it. That's all it takes. Uh, let's deploy this logic. It is deployed. And now we return to data to test it out. So first, let's log out and go back to the original state. Click Get. And notice that the social security is not included in the response because the user is not logged in and we're making a, an API request from a non-authenticated user. However, as soon as we log in as admin, so now any request that we make in the REST console is going to be uh, made from the identity of the logged in user who is an admin. Click Get and notice that social security number is now included. And uh, notice how easy it was to implement this logic and uh, the codeless logic is rather straightforward. Uh, to go over this one more time, just to make sure that you understand how the flow goes, it goes like this. So we get a collection of user roles, which includes all the roles that the current user belongs to. And the current user may not even exist. In this case, the user roles really contains, contains just the roles not authenticated user and REST user, meaning the roles that a not logged in user would belong to. Uh, if the user is logged in, then the user roles collection will include uh, all the roles that would be attributed to a logged in user, such as authenticated user, and if they're making a REST call, it's going to be REST user. But more importantly, we care about the, the role called admin. So we, this block checks if the admin role belongs to this collection. If it is there, then we have to reverse that Boolean value because we want to apply some logic if admin is not part of this role, meaning if, if it's anyone but admin. Once we go into this do section of the if block, then we get the response result. And response result contains a collection of the objects retrieved from the find operation for each element in this collection. Uh, we created the variable called employee and then for each element we execute this block which deletes the social security number property for that employee. Once it is modified then the response result of course is modified as well and that's what we see going back to the calling application. You can see the code that is generated for this uh, codeless logic. The code is right here and you can see exactly how it works by studying the code as well. So hopefully this gives you a better idea how Codeless works and how to create API event handlers. Thank you, and as always, happy Codeless coding.